Oh, I forgot my coffee. Hello everyone and welcome to the French Cooking Academy. I think it's live. Um, uh, so this is my first time I'm doing that live streaming. So if you can hear me or see me well, that you could just let me know in the chat uh, because the setup I've got is very, very simple. So I've seen we've got some people in the chat at the moment, Sandra and Ernest. So welcome, you can see me. Uh, we're just going to wait until uh, some people <laughs> joins in. Sandra looks great. Ah, this is exciting. Look at this. Live on the air. And best of all, there's no editing involved afterwards. Now, can you imagine this? Now, when you are a video producer. Hi there, Teddy. Sorry, it's very hard for me to see the chat as well. And Philip, hi. So what we're going to do to start with, just for the first five minutes or so, um, just wait for people to come in. And I'm just going to... Well, can you actually hear me properly? And how is the picture? Hi from Phoenix. Hi, even Arizona. My God, people are coming from everywhere. Hi, man. Hi, CJ. Nice to meet everyone for the first time. This is live here. Yeah. That's such a weird feeling to see. It's like some kind of catch up, you know? We could have a coffee. The picture is fine and the sound is good. Even, oh, thanks for that. Really good. Sounds a picture, okay. Greetings from Mexico. Love you. Mexico. Hey, you know, I speak a bit of, well, speak a bit. I understand more Spanish than I speak, actually, because, you know, uh, Spain is close to France. And I did spend some time in Central America and uh, South America a lot. Hello from Wales. Wow. Canada, Brazil, what time it is over there, still light behind you. Yes, so here it's basically 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so it's very, very early. And just bear with me because you know what? I think I uh, forget my my coffee, but I did get some water. Did you try to grab me my coffee there? Sorry, I'm going to try to get a coffee while I'm waiting. So... Cheers, guys. 10 o'clock in the morning. This is the first live show. Um, and I'm going to try to interact with you guys. So if I don't um, see your question on the chat, sorry about that, because honestly, I'm doing this with the... Uh, you know, it's the new live stream option from YouTube, like directly on the computer. So you don't need to have any software or anything like that. You just click the button, uh, camera, and basically you pretty much go live. Uh, hi, Texas. Yeah, so you, you can chat between you as well. This is great. Uh, Alexander Chan, where are you? Is that a question for me, Alexander? Works great. Hey, thanks for the video. I've been learning a lot from you, which you in French cooking. <laughs> Hello from Illinois. Hello, America. Hello, Mexico. Uh, Australia. I think you got people from Canada as well, Brazil. South America, well, welcome to the world, really, because, my God, it's just like a, a, a world meeting. So what time is it for you guys? Because, I've, I, you know, the biggest problem I have, I never know when to post because there's so many time zones. So if you can quickly put in the chat just, like, what time is it roughly in your country? Are you classically trained or self? No, I am a... Uh, Self-taught uh, cook. Uh, I'm not uh, professionally trained at all. I'm um, just looking at the chat here. 5 p.m. Saturday in Phoenix. Oh, well, okay, so it's afternoon. One here in the UK, it's 1, 7 p.m. Oh, my God. So it's all night time. So it's morning for me and night for you. 8 o'clock at night. Elizabeth, uh, near Washington, DC, 8 p.m. Okay, well, sorry, but that's, uh, that's a bit of a strange... Uh, Thing. I'm having a coffee and you're about to, uh, to have dinner already. Belgium is two a.m. Same time in Paris. Is that 2 a.m. in Belgium? 8 p.m., 9 p.m. in Buenos Aires. Mm. Uh, 
Five been in Western Canada. Yeah, good to see you live. <laughs> yeah, honestly, the I think the live show really brings something totally just a total new experience for me because finally, you know, you're just not on your own in front of the, of the camera. Uh, like usually, you know, you just set the camera, you record, you, you you know, you make your stuff, but you can't you can't interact and stuff like that. So that, that live stream is like really it's really good to see that you know I can have uh, questions coming in. Mystery girl, like your cooking. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, thanks, guys, by the way, for uh, watching the channel. So first of all, all the thank you to uh, all of you that have been following the channel for the last, uh, you know, I've been doing this for like three years now. So it's been really uh, an amazing journey so far. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been growing in popularity. And, uh, and I've been learning tons of stuff. Like people ask me, am I a trained chef? No, I'm not a professional chef. I actually work uh, in IT. You know, I'm, I used to work in uh, technology full time. And I've, I break down to part time to be able to actually dedicate more time to the channel. So that was that's the whole project. You see, so now I'm doing part time working still in IT. Imagine technology has got nothing to do with cooking. And then the other half uh, is all these things. So all this. Uh, Cheers to you. Let me let me read the chat. I introduced your chicken hunter and baked potatoes orange. Oh, there, Pro compliment from the family. Oh, thanks for that. Uh, you have some skills, but should we the escoffee technique? <laughs> it took me five years to perfect. Yes. So uh, look, I don't even know. I don't even know how many people are joining so far. Let me check the software here. Oh yes, 42, 42 people so far. Oh, that's good. Look at this. It's, uh, I have no idea how many people are going to join in, to be honest. I thought, like, oh, this is terrible. It's just like a live thing. You don't know what to do. And, and honestly, uh, we're going to talk about some things, as you can see here. I've got some stuff here. I, I did say we're going to talk about like the French. Um, hi, Erivan. Uh, we're going to talk about something. But being live, of course, it's, it's a different story than pre-recorded because you can't kind of playing things in your own accord and your own time. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to uh, mix the, uh, the show into two sections. So first off, uh, we've got 43 people. If you have any question, I did say it was a Q and A session to start with. So if you have any burning question you want to ask, um, it's always easier. Um, you know, you can ask me now so I can, watch the chat going and I can try to answer uh, any question you have. I see some people have been asking questions so far. Found your video very helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, Shane, Philippe, are you in Australia? Yes. So yes, let's clarify this. So I'm French. I'm born in France. I grew up in France. I've lived most, most of my life in France. And I've been in Australia for the past was that four years, four or five years. So at the moment, I live in Melbourne which is on the uh, eastern side, like southeastern side of uh, Australia, which is near Sydney. Do you live in Australia? How did you end up down under? Where, how did I come here? Of course, as you would imagine, there's always a girl involved. Uh, maybe some of you have, may, may have been wondering. That was one of the reasons I came here. Uh, could you do more French desserts? Uh, Yes, I could. So people want to, you know, want me to do specific things like more savory, more sad, more dessert. Now, the difficulty, uh, you know, when you have a channel is like, I don't have too many videos I can run, uh, you know, per week at the moment. So yes, I can try. I need to balance out, you know, dessert and everything. So I'm trying to put, you know, sometimes dessert, sometimes dishes, sometimes side dishes. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to do my best, but I'll keep that in mind for the dessert. Uh, how, do, uh, how long have you been here? I've been here yeah, for four years. What is your favorite fruit? You know what? I think it's uh, my favorite fruit. I think I, can, I really like pineapple. I think pineapple, for some reason, I like exotic fruits. A good, a good juicy pineapple. Now, honestly, that's really good. I like mangoes as well. And I like some uh, other exotic fruit, like uh, from Indonesia, like the mangustan or something like that. Anything that's very sweet and tasty. Yeah? I like passion fruit as well. Uh, when you start cooking the first time, uh, I start cooking. 
Well, look, in France, you always cook. Huh? We are French. And so cooking is part of our DNA kind of things. But to be honest, it's only one year before I came to Australia that I started to be serious about cooking and started to explore my own, you know, my own uh, cuisine kind of thing. So it's been more like, what, five years, something like that. Fascinated with French dessert tart. Could you do more things with Dijon mustard? <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny one. <laughs> That's a funny one. Alexander, funny, funny question. Morphing with Dijon mustard. Yeah, I can uh, I can look about it. We've got quite a, uh, you know, quite some dish with the mustard. Uh, but I can look it up. Uh, merci pour video. Visiter Los Angeles. Yeah, if I can visit Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, there is some future plan to go. And uh, I've got some extended family in America, actually. They live in Oregon. So nothing near Portland. So if you're around there at some point, I may organize like a meetup or something. Uh, yeah. So instead of a live, next thing is going to be like, let's meet up, you know, for real. That's going to be interesting. What do you think is the most essential French cooking technique? Uh, for me, the most essential cooking technique, learn to make stock. This is even a basic stock. Like, I'm, you know, there's that big debate about using stock to make a better stock, like Escoffier. Stock making is the base of all sauces in France, and it is really what is going to bring you the taste to the, to the dishes. And the more I cook, the more I realize that that's super important. Uh, learning how to make that stock is going to really give you that extra flavoring and this kind of typical French type of, of, uh, of French taste that you want. Uh, where is the girl? Oh, she's not here. No one. She's the one that gave me the coffee. <laughs> Now she's gone and she went for breakfast. She didn't want to be here for the live. Hello from Sacramento. Frank, Libari, welcome. Abby Marnie, what is your favorite non-European cuisine? Um, I'm a big fan of roast duck from uh, Chinese food. I've loved when I, I spent a lot of time in Singapore eating Chinese food, but the elaborate, not, not the basic food called Chinese food. I'm talking about the real, you know, proper Chinese food. Uh, that would be my number one, I think, uh, Chinese, then Indian. I'm cooking a lot of Indian food on the side as well. Hello from New York, Enjoy. Hey, Douglas, Susan. Hello from Boston, Christian. Uh, hi, can I, how can I be a great chef? Keep cooking, honestly. Even if you don't cook often, if you want to improve your, your skill, as we say, practice makes perfect. Just take simple things you're comfortable with and keep at it, you know? If it's, if it's a simple uh, egg, a simple omelette, a simple sauce that you can make, a simple dish, a stew, keep on perfecting that. And, and I think if you get comfortable with your cooking, this is where you're going to get more interest. If you keep on failing recipes because they're too difficult, you're going you're gonna to lose interest. You know, that's like surfing. I, I, I surf a lot as well. And surfing, if you're not, uh, if you don't start with a, you know, a large surfboard on a small wave, you're not going to have a good time and you're going to stop. The same thing for cooking. What kind of Indian, uh, what do you mean, what kind of Indian food do I like? Uh, my best uh, food is the biryani, actually. I never managed to make the biryani, but uh, I think uh, lamb biryani is one of my favorites. Uh, do you cook Cajun cuisine? No, not too much, actually. Do you cook Arab meal before, mystery girl? Uh, not exactly Arab. But you may know that France has got a close relationship with Algeria and Morocco, so North uh, Africa. And we've got a lot of North African dishes, yes, in French cooking. So what we call in France couscous uh, is a big, uh, it's a big dish in France with the tagines, with plenty of Moroccan food in France. So yes, I've been cooking that before, but not on the channel. Uh, we vegan, whole plant food people want the French in France, but not... Loaded with dairy. Yeah, sorry about that. French cooking has got a lot and lot of dairy. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to make without it. There's a few recipes that don't use dairy, but uh, yeah, I'll try to keep, keep that in mind. Uh, it's like the complexity in taste of Italian. Harry Van, my cousin is going to send me a recipe. I can send you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please send me anything you want, guys. 25% pastry and bread mix session. One Friday month. So just to give you a bit of numbers, now we've reached out to 60 people, so the chat is going uh, very fast. Uh, so sorry about that. I'm trying to catch up with <laughs> all of the questions. I'm starting at the bottom here. Uh, welcome, everyone. Anand, Shaza, Alexander, and what is your Thanks for sharing French cooking with us. 
amazing cook. Did you go to a culinary school? Any chance? No, like I said, you know, like uh, what I did with the um, the French culinary uh, things is that actually I started to use at the very beginning a culinary a French culinary school book. And this is why it looks like I've been to a school because it's uh, that book is like really like if you were at school. So you learn these things like the same way as, uh, you know, as, as if you were in school, um, which is very, very uh, good, actually, when you want to learn cooking. You mentioned your part Vietnamese. Uh, does your cooking include any Vietnamese flavor since the French influence? There was a strong from that. There's no Vietnamese influence at all in my cooking. I am a quarter Vietnamese. And to be honest, I don't know how to cook many in a Vietnamese dish uh, at all, away from uh, what we call the name, like the, the, the pan fried rice paper spring roll. Love this thing. The one that you roll in salad with mint and stuff. Love those. Uh, have you done a video on how to set a menu for, say, Sunday lunch or dinner party? Uh, like the recipe, but I'm not sure. Uh, what too much with that? Uh, I haven't done menus yet. Uh, kind of hard. I can look into it. Yeah, it's uh, the problem with menus. You see, guys, what a lot of people want me to do certain things, like you know, do a menu, do a whole series. But sometimes it's very hard to you know, if I give you a text, something or posting. Oh, this is a menu. I need to have the videos that goes with it because otherwise, if I just put a, a written recipe, it's kind of hard for people. So oh, I'm going to do that. I guess you're used to see the videos live. Um, but yeah, I, I could post some menus. I've got some books that I've actually got some menus for winter, for occasions. Um, but then again, you need a recipe with it. Uh, do you have another passion other than cooking and IT? Yes, surfing is my uh, biggest passion. Love surfing to bits. And uh, I did a lot of traveling, so I'm actually quite a keen globetrotter. Um, and surfer, actually, I used to travel the world a lot before I settled down in Australia. I think I've I've, I've done around two world tour so far, and visited. But what was it like? Like what? How many countries? Forty six or fifty six, something like that. Um, can you say hello, my friend? Yeah, love your channel. Hi, Clear Sprite. Hi to you, Charlie. Hello. You're brave. I'm scared to death of sharks. <laughs> the sharks. Oh, you know what? The sharks. Oh, bloody hell. The sharks in Australia. That's a problem, actually, the sharks. Nothing to do with cooking. But, um, well, actually, you can eat them, the sharks. Uh, when I was living in the West Indies, uh, because, yeah, I did say I've traveled. I lived in the West Indies in the Guadalupe Island of uh, the French island. Uh, I was eating sharks there all the time. You can actually buy a shark at a supermarket. So you buy a shark. It's like a packet of uh, sliced sharks. And uh, yeah, just cook them. It's, it's just like a, it's like a tuna steak kind of thing. You know, put it in the pan. It's pretty good. Uh, have you considered doing video covering awful? Yeah, the awful. Uh, that's, that's the question. I'm, I'm repeating the question you asked, guys. Uh, if you can see. So doing awful? Yes, I uh, haven't done really. I've done the liver. I've got a salad on the liver, the liver video. But uh, away from that one, I. Uh, I didn't because first off, I'm not too much a super great fan of awful, to be honest. That's just a personal thing. And there are a lot of recipes. But also for people, the, every, I think everybody's a bit like, you know, awful. It's like, uh. Uh, where are you from, France Roger? And are you married? And this is a question from Belenka. So where are you from, France? So I'm born uh, well, in Versailles, which is near, very close to Paris. So I'm considered to be a Parisian, uh, Parisian guy. And are you married? Yes, actually, I am married. Uh, okay. Well. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I don't know anything about moderating, guys, because I've, I've heard that sometimes the chat can get a bit wild. Uh, I've got no way of touching the, the keyboard because I've set up my computer a bit far. Uh, so sorry if this if there's some strange comments going through. Um, I won't be sorry if you decide to skip uh, making an awful video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe I need to try. What about brain? So tell me, guys, well, what's if I was to make a video about brains, like you know, which is a very common controversial stuff. Lamb brains. What's your view on that? Andy, hey, 
Patreon subscribers, thank you very much. But hey, by the way, guys, if you're on Patreon, my God, thanks to you, this amazing support. It really, really helps me as a complimentary, uh, you know, little side income uh, to get me going with that part-time job. So really appreciate your help. And there's just now on a holiday, just want to drop in a line, give me the best wishes in the channel. You stay longer. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for passing by. That's the beauty of uh, live. You can come in and out, you know, it's just like a kind of a, uh, it's just a, like a cafe, you know, you can come here. Do you, uh, what do you eat daily? Uh, what do I eat daily? Uh, kind of everything. Like I said, sometimes I'm making other food in French. So sometimes I can make some, uh, you know, some Indian food. Sometimes I make some simple uh, pasta dishes, chicken, uh, things with tomatoes. I think whatever it's easy. Like I think every, you know, every house is, you know, I'm not cooking like, massive meals all the time because I'm working as well. Sometimes I just don't have the time. Uh, what camera equipment do you use? I'm using at the moment a new camera, which is kind of the same as before, a Canon 6D Mark II. And I've got a simple lavalier microphone, a big wild thing. Actually, it's a cheaper thing. I need to replace it because the sound quality is pretty bad. Do the lamb brain video. <laughs> would be very interesting, even if you don't like the recipe. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing that one. It's a bit of a shocker, the brains, isn't it? Like, you want to do a... Do you have a favorite spice or flavor you find yourself reaching for? I've been experimenting with citrus. Uh, I think in terms of spices, French cooking, we don't have really any amazing spice that, uh, by the way, we need to start talking about all the, the pantry stuff. Talking about spice, let's start, let's start about the pantry stuff. So I've got here, um, these two things are not uh, spices, but this is what really makes the French taste in terms of spice. So thyme, I don't know if you can see because the light is terrible. And these are dry bay leaves. Now these two things here, I don't know if you can see in the light, bay leaf and thyme, honestly, this is what most of the time is gonna give you that kind of French smell in a dish. And that is very, very important for the French flavors. Um, let me go back to the chat there. Uh, request a recipe of duck breast. Uh, says, I think I've got the duck breast uh, with the orange duck breast, and I've got the pepper, green peppercorn duck breast as well. Uh, hi from Malaysia. Have a nice day. Hi there. What is your go to style of knife for most food everyday use? Okay, so that's one question here, and another question what cookbooks and chef vloggers inspire you? So, for the cookbooks, I'm only using kind of culinary school types of books. And these are the books that really tells you how to do things. I'm not really looking too much at actual cookbooks that you buy in the uh, the normal shops with uh, with recipes because they are more like fancy stuff for the one-off, but you don't automatically learn a specific thing. Uh, in terms of knives, also what you want, you want to see, look. So that thing, okay. These are global knives. That's what you see all the time that I'm using. And I didn't buy these. These were actually a present given to me when I started the channel. So it's a friend that actually bought me this, uh, that knife set, and I've never bought any other knives because uh, honestly, I didn't have much money. They're super expensive, but I need to buy some good knives. So I would buy the Sabatier knife, I think, next. Uh, which are the French uh, knife or the, the Victorinox knife, the Swiss knives are pretty good as well. And the Rosewood one, good value for money and they're very, very sharp. Can you say hamburger? <laughs> hamburger, <laughs> yes, that must be it. Do you have any tips on cooking with stainless steel pan? Um, interesting question, the stainless steel pan. Yeah, so when you cook, uh, I don't think it's a tip uh, stainless steel, basically, you can use them pretty much for uh, for everything. Um, but I find that the more you pan, you know, like the steel pan are very good for like frying. If you want to do just frying with oil, they're very good for that. The, I think the stainless steel stuff is like you can really really use it with everything uh, you want. That, that's the beauty about it. You don't have to think too much. How am I cooking? Uh, you know, a tomato sauce dish or, uh, you know, or a steak or anything like that. The only thing I would say is that if you use only stainless steel, you're going to keep your cooking to that kind of 
the, the all rounder type of thing because your meats, your vegetable, whatever you do, it's always it's always kind of going to turn out the same way. And if you use a, a pan, for instance, like cast iron or steel or black steel pan, and you want to fry things, these pans are made for refrying. So you're going to get really that, you know, that brown color, that nice uh, cooked layer that you won't have automatically with a stainless steel pan. So tips for stainless steel, just use that. If, you, if you're on a budget, buy a set of good quality stainless steel to start with before venturing into other things. Uh, have you missed your French? Cheese, yes, I miss French cheese a lot. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, some of them are available in Australia, but they're very expensive. Do you have the Larousse Gastronomic Cookbook? Uh, not yet, actually. I've, there, there is, a, again, extended family that uh, there is an English version, but I want to get the French version. Uh, what about the Wuschtoff knife from Germany? Yeah, I think they're good knives. Yeah, no, not a problem. It should be, I was wondering the same thing. Uh, Le Creuset or stove for Dutch ovens? Yes. Stick to my stainless steel. <laughs> no problem. So Le Creuset, yes, cast iron. So I don't have the pan here. It's somewhere here in my cupboard. Um, honestly, the Le Creuset pan, when you see the videos, it's not that I want to, um, you know, always promote the Le Creuset brand. You know, I don't have any affiliation. But honestly, I've been using a Le Creuset uh, pan since the beginning. Uh, and that pan actually is over there, I was looking at it. And there's not a scratch on the pan. I mean, I've been doing everything with it, like in the oven, on the stove, I put sauces, some things are acidic, I've been frying, whatever. That thing has been a workhorse. So that's why I'm defending that pan. I can guarantee you its quality, if you ever want to get one, but it's expensive. Uh, everything else, stainless steel. What are you doing in Australia? We're living at the moment, really. <laughs> Trying to survive, really, like uh, that is the uh, the common thing. Whoa! But anyway, guys, that was a lot of questions so far. I think now the chat has come down a little bit. What about non-stick pan? Uh, non-stick pan. To be honest, I'm not a fan of non-sticks, but they do have their use. Uh, very important. So for me, non-stick pan really strictly reserved usually. Uh, for eggs, when you make anything like omelette or eggs, or like that, even a Spanish style, like this, you know, they call it here, like the frittata kind of thing, anything like that, uh, usually a non stick pan, uh, that's what I use it for. Take care, yeah, see you guys, see you, Jeff. How about something with foie gras? Foie gras here is very expensive to get. You had the right direction. Oh, thank Jeff for the uh, for the comments. Sarah Hiker, are you married? Yes, I already said yes. Sorry, uh, you need a nice pizza oven outdoor. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a, I don't have a pizza. Uh, ooh, it's my god, two o'clock in the morning, two heures du matin en France. Je rentre de soirée, je tombe sur ce direct. <laughs> Hi from France. Bonjour, bonjour à tous. Ça fait plaisir. Là, ça fait tôt quand même, deux heures du matin pour regarder un live. Uh, what's your favorite uh, French cheese? To be honest, um, Conte is one of my favorite cheese, but I like the simple cheese, like the Gruyere cheese. Uh, I like the Tom, Tom de Savoie, so it's also a cheese I really like. Favorite brand of Dijon mustard. Did I? Yes. Il n'y a que mai, qui mai. That's what we say in France. If you're French, you will. <laughs> Hi from Qatar. Hey, hi there. That's amazing. People, you guys are coming from everywhere. That's quite, that's quite something. Uh, how do you say thin? Do you feed the food you cook to someone else? Uh, usually to me, sometimes I bring the food at work. Like leftovers, if it's a cake or something, I kind of either eat it, keep it for myself, or I kind of bring it to work and people are more than happy to play the guinea pigs. Leave the chat, I want you to still love your channel, keep the amazing work. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Sorry about the time. I know like people are coming and leaving. I know it's it's very, very um it's very difficult to come at this time. Now, um what do you think guys? Shall we start talking about this? It's been that's crazy. That's been already 30 minutes. <laughs> I couldn't even start talking about anything. Yeah, the tartiflette, I know. I know, you know what? I'm 
cannot find that bloody Roblo Shanxi is so far in Melbourne. I've been looking around and they got tons of cheese except that one. And that's why I'm stuck with that bloody recipe. What's the easy popular French meal? Uh, like our mashed potato and noodles and mac and cheese. Well, you know what, in terms of easy recipes, if you're at home, and we're going to talk about the French pantry, actually, the most simple dish that people will do usually is the simple noodles or just pastas. We call them cookie it with a bit of butter and cheese on top and perhaps a pieces of ham. Yeah, but the pâte au gruyère, we call them pasta with gruyère cheese. That's the most common student style food that people, when you don't have nothing in your cupboards, there's always a pasta hanging around. Uh, do you try a recipe before making a video? There's some interesting questions. Wine recommended for cooking and do you try the recipe now? A very good question. One thing about my channel, guys, uh, that you may not know, and I've said it a few times, I am not testing the recipes. Uh, I think about 2% of my recipe uh, I've, I, I, you know, I kind of test before. Most of the thing you've seen, including uh, Escoffier stuff, it is usually the first time I'm making the recipe in my life. So all what you see is pretty much live. I'm just following these guidelines from Escoffier or from books I trust because I know I can rely on the amounts and stuff. And this is what you get. For everything with a bit of butter, <laughs> butter yeah. a bread of butter, bread of butter, now nah, look at that, this is French butter, uh, there you go, I don't know if you can see it, it's a brand, I found it in Melbourne, amazing, Edivir, that's a common commercial brand you'll find for butter, and it's, uh, that's like a spreadable form of the butter like that, but it is, uh, it is really good, French butter, I don't want to brag, but I think it's the best butter. It really has got that very specific uh, nutty flavor that I never found in any type of butter. And hi from the Philippines, important ingredient that you can't do without in your pantry. Okay, so guys, uh, let's, we've been doing 30 minutes of questions. Let me start to talk about the pantry because I think there's a few interesting questions um, about you know, what we need uh, in, in the pantry. What is the French pantry? What is the basic things uh, you're going to be needing uh, to have in your French menu? So like I said, the basic of the basics, okay, the spices that every French house will have are these things. And you need to have these to really get that French taste. So you've got thyme, the bay leaves or dry bay leaf, extremely important because that's also for the bouquet garni you need to have that and for the pantry like you need onions red not so common but the brown onion super important shallots no these are the shallots here yeah. okay so that's an onion that's a shallot that's different things and also of course garlic these are the i'm sorry i've got a cat hanging around uh these are the um the main things for the taste that you need to have. Now, along with these, let me grab some stuff. You have those stuff. Now, look at that. And that is the second thing you need to have in the fridge. So along with the carrots, oh, sorry, along with the onion, you're going to have carrots. You're going to have fresh parsley, curly or like this, like flat leaf. You're going to have leeks. And that's a fresh leek. And celery. These are the most important quintessential things you need to have in your fridge and that French people will kind of really have all the time. As soon as you go shopping, that will be part of the, you know, of what's in the fridge. And that's going to allow you to make actually a lot of the bases, like the mirepoix, for instance. So remember, onion, Carrots, onions, carrots, celery, and the bouquet garni, which is simply the, the leaves of the leek, the parsley, the thyme, the bay leaves. So it all kinds of revolve around those spices. Salt and pepper. I'm not showing this. Huh? This is, of course, the uh, you know the where it starts with. But these are really the key ingredients 
uh, you're going to use actually over and over again. And you won't, you know, you won't realize, but it's used so much in French cooking. It's just amazing. Uh, yeah, the brand is showing is uh, Elevir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where do you work? That uh, where do you work? That maybe too much. Yeah, I can't tell about yeah the company name. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, what is a spicy French recipe? We don't really have much spices. There is a Piment d'Espelette in the southwest of France uh, where I make that chicken basquez. Uh, it's a very, very light uh, type of, uh, of chili. I think this is as far as it goes when it comes to spices. Uh, thanks for the you know, I've got those two all the time. Take care and good luck. Yeah. Thanks, Velvet Snow. I need to know more how to use cinnamon. Uh, yeah, cinnamon and nutmeg. Nutmeg is uh, really plays a quite a good role also in French cooking, and you can have it actually. There's my pantry in there. Um, if I look, yeah, you see, look, I've got one. That's a whole nutmeg. So yes, that goes a lot with potatoes. A lot of time in French cooking, potatoes, bechamel sauce, good thing to have. But you know, people don't always always have it now. Let me answer another question. Hello from Thailand. Whoa. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> my God, the whole world in there. Uh, my wife is Australian. She's not French and she doesn't speak any French. Um, another question people have just asked me is about that. Sorry, they are not full. <laughs> okay, so these are wines. You can't see, but this is a white wine and this is a red wine. A lot of time people are actually asking me, Oh, can you show about the wine pairing and, and uh, you know, what, what you can get? And what I want to talk about, what's your favorite dessert to make? Uh, I like anything with uh, pastry cream in there, you know, like, uh, like the vanilla slice things. Actually, I need to make a video on that. And of course, in France, my favorite is the galette des rois, which is like a frangipan feeling like an almond uh, and pastry cream filling with puff pastry. That's one of my favorites. Uh, let's talk about the wine. Now, someone just asked me in the chat, sorry, this thing is gone now, I can't see the name, sorry about that. Uh, but you did ask me what kind of wine can we use for cooking? Now, the most common wine you need to have in the pantry is usually a white wine rather than a red wine for the French cooking because that is what, is, that this is what we use a lot for uh, deglazing sauces and things like that to have with mussels and everything. And it is always white wine. It's also a good thing to have because contrary to what people think, when you have a cheese board, for instance, and you eat cheese, red wine is actually not the type of wine you should put on your table, okay? When you eat cheese, it is usually champagne or white wine. You need to have, hi from Mexico, hi there. <laughs> um, and the type of wine you should have, uh, usually you want to have a dry wine huh, for cooking. You don't want to have a sweet wine. You want to keep it on the dry side. But in terms of uh, a wine you could get, this is a typical example. This is one of my go-to wine. Uh, it is the Chablis. It is actually a Chardonnay wine, uh, but it's not the Chardonnay that you like. Like in Australia, Chardonnay is very sweet. The French Chardonnay, it is a Burgundy white wine. Okay, and the particularity about a Chablis is that it is a dry wine with the slight kind of intonation of fruits at the end, pears, you know, exotic fruits, uh, you know, passion fruit, whatever you, you get it from. But you can use it a lot with seafood, with sauces, and it's not that expensive at all. You can also find it in a lot of countries. Uh, I'm in Australia, and I can find even the best quality one like the... Uh, the Grand Cru, which are the really top of the range Chablis, cost me around here about $50 Australian. That might be about like $30 US for like the top of the top. That thing here, 10 US dollars. And you get a really drinkable wine that you can use to drink. You can use it with cheese. You can use it for cooking. And you can stock them up, pile them up in your pantry. They're really good. For the red, uh, when it comes to red wine, it, it, you know, it really depends. You can take a Côte du Rhône or a, a Burgundy wine. It really depends on what you're doing. Usually, I think people that want a red wine sauce, they're going to go for the, uh, the Bordeaux style, you know, the, the, the kind of very thick, very heavy uh, types of wine. 
because you want to have that really strong taste in your sauces. Like if you take a burgundy, sometimes it's a bit light, and people I've seen that people find it a little bit like uh, you know, it's good, but it's you know, it's 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 not all that uh, not all that good. Oh, sorry, let me go back to the chat there. Hi from Dominican Republic. Hello, Mario. Sancho does Belinka. Do you have kids? No, I don't have kids. Uh, I am a uh, kidless. Uh, mustard is hot. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, next, let's talk about. We've shown. I started with the butter. So it's a bit messy. That it's not structured at all. Sorry, guys. Uh, when it comes to the fridge and the French pantry, what are the dairy products you need to have? There's not too many. Butter. Number one, milk. Number two, and the milk, there's a big discussion in America, I guess. You've been asking me what is like full cream milk, what is a whole milk. I've got the same question to ask you guys. So in the chat, if you're in America, by the way, guys, please tell me for you, what are the different types of milks that you have? Because here, like in Australia, in France, I don't know if you can see that. It says here, full cream milk, okay? Now, full cream here, it means basically it's just plain milk that hasn't been filtered, nothing has been removed, and all the natural fat that's contained in the milk is in there. So when in the video I say, oh, just use like full milk or full cream milk, it basically means this. In France, we've got three types of milk. You've got the full one, which is like full fat. You've got half fat. Uh, it's been skimmed, and then you got the very, very skimmed milk, like the very almost like the light version. So we get three version. Now, what do you have in? Uh, let me see. Uh, do you live by the beach? Uh, yeah, kind of by the beach, by the bay in Melbourne, really. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm living not, not too far from the beach, but it's the bay. It's not the ocean actually. Uh, so you get a whole milk, two percent, one percent, and skin. Is that the milk? Milk varieties, whole milk 2%, milk 1%, and no fat milk. Skim milk, and that's in Canada. So you've got, okay, so you've got three types of milk, right? So a bit like, a bit like here. Right, so when I say, uh, yeah, if you see on the video next, like I'm, I'm saying like full cream milk or whole milk, I mean the, yeah, I mean the whole milk basically for you. I can see whole milk, okay. Oh, that's, that's very interesting. Thanks, guys, for clarifying this because it's such a struggle, you know, with all the different uh, measurements and everything. Whole milk, raw milk versus pasteurized milk. Uh, skim and fat milk, synonyms, raw milk and pasteurized milk. Okay. All right. Well, that's for the milk. Very important. So butter, milk. The in front, you're going to have also... That's the other question I need to ask you. The cream. I mean, that has been on the channel... Uh, such a debate about the cream every single time. I'm getting so many questions. What do you mean by pure cream? What do you mean by, uh, you know, uh, full cream or whatever? This is pure cream. This is why I call it. It's called pure cream. What it is, again, it says here, pasteurize a pure cream with a minimum of 35% milk fat. And I think in America you call that heavy whipping cream. Is that is that right? A lot of U.S. chefs use lactose-free milk. In the U.S., they would say whole milk. Okay, so well, maybe I use whole milk as a as a word. What about the cream, guys? Well, what about the uh, use heavy cream from America, but it's never as thick as your cream? Yeah, there's two types uh, of cream, but in France, you got two. Uh, this is the liquid version, so that's the the, the full-fat cream. And it is very, can you see, can you hear? It's very liquid, it's almost like milk. And it's great for cooking. That's the one I'm using all the time, by the way. Uh, because it's, I don't want it thick, because I want to thicken it myself. That's the first thing. So creme liquide, liquid cream, uh, for the French money, and creme fraiche. That's the other one we use in France as well. You will usually have this in a French fridge, you know, like a standard liquid cream. And when it comes to the actual solid type of, of cream in France, we usually use creme fraiche. We don't use, like in Australia, these uh, creams that are like thickened creams. We don't use that at all. It's either the liquid one 
or the creme fraiche one. The last thing you need to have, of course, in your fridges, I, I just take this night, it's just cheese. Okay, so this is a cheddar cheese because, you know, I'm in Australia, but that represents usually Gruyere cheese in France or Emmental cheese, Emmentaler, I think it's called, something like that. And so that's very important uh, to have. And this is what you're going to find in the French fridge. This is like the core of the core that everybody would have as a minimum. And if you want to make French food, if you have these, chances are you're going to be able to make a lot of French food. Let me put this away. Man, it's messy in here. Okay, uh, whipping cream has a little less and small difference than heavy cream, but confused when it compared to international. Yeah, I mean, more side dishes on your menu. I've got a playlist on the side dishes. And the same thing, guys, if you, if you haven't seen that, uh, go into the, uh, on the channel, you can search for recipe. I think there's a search button for anything you want. And there's also a, um, a playlist option where you can have, I've, I think I've got like 15 playlists. I've, I've, I've classified things with like beef, uh, chicken, starters, side dishes, vegetables, dessert. It's all in there. But only uh, the word whipping cream has a little less fat. Uh, questions. I live in Paris three months out of the year. Oh, oh lucky you. Dimon figured what is the cheese I buy in a tub called fromage blanc. Ah, that is a, an interesting question. You know what the fromage blanc is actually something that is typically French. You won't find it uh, because I've researched that at some point because I was also trying to find out the closest thing that people kind of compare it to is cottage cheese. But it's not cottage cheese. It's a, it's a specific type of fresh cheese that is made in a certain way that gives you that kind of thing. And apparently it is typically French. And, and you, I haven't seen anything of the sort. Uh, so I've, I've seen similar things, but not, not like for much more. Uh, no, sour cream, in, no, 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 no. That's also, be careful with that. Sour cream, uh, apparently from what I can remember, has got much less uh, fat or something like that. If you use sour cream in, instead of creme fraiche, what happened a lot of time, it will split. Don't use that instead. If it says creme fraiche, you have to use creme fraiche. Uh, you haven't seen creme fraiche in the local market. Creme fraiche is not that common, guys. So that's why I'm not putting in the video because a lot of time, I know even for me, it's hard to find and it's not a real one anyway. Uh, honestly, when it comes to cream, the go-to thing you need to get, if you're in America, heavy whipping cream, this kind of liquid full fat cream, that's perfect. You can use this for absolutely everything when it comes to cooking. You can reduce it, you put it in a pan, you can put it on, a, on your gratin, you can put it in your sauces. I'm using that one all the time. Honestly, that's what I'm using. That's my go-to cream. It's not thickened, it's pure. There's no additive, it's just a simple cream. That's what I want, just, you know, plain straight, simple. Uh, at your market, creme fraiche is easy to find. Do you have a Trader's Joe near you? Uh, in Mascarpone, anywhere. Okay, I will check that out. I like you, but in uh, fromage blanc is everything to cook when I'm in Paris. <laughs> uh, oh, if this one has froze me, Elizabeth, uh, what is castor sugar? Well, you know what? Uh, when I arrived here as well, I think in England, um, I was in England before here, castor sugar, I never quite understand as well. Uh, the only thing I find, castor sugar is kind of, uh, it's thinner than the granulated sugar. So I think it's a size, it's a size thing. Like the castor sugar, I've got some here actually. It's very useful because it dissolves very quickly. So it's already, you know, making a way that's very thin. And uh, the French sugar we have, it's true actually, it's kind of, it's kind of thick. It's like these big grains. And if you use that in a, in a dough when you make shortcut, space, shortcut pastry by hand, what you're going to get, you know, it's like you may have these crystals of sugar. So I think the castor sugar kind of helps to, you know, uh, to, to dissolve quickly, uh, you know, more quickly. Uh, do you take inspiration from other chefs? Uh, I, you know what? Inspiration from, from chef, I think when you cook, um, when I started, I started to look at plenty, you know, lots of chefs. And a lot of time it was like, oh yeah, I like that chef, I like this style, whatever. And then you buy the cookbooks. 
I know the one thing that really annoys me with a lot of even known chefs, when they publish books, even though the person inspired me, if you buy their books a lot of time, there's so many mistakes. Like you buy the book, you try to make the recipe, one out of five recipes are wrong. Like the measurements are not good, it doesn't turn out the way. So the publishing that goes on, maybe they got a good intention to start with, but what they're publishing is not checked at all. And this is what I've, I've stopped looking at the Michelin star chef and things, even though I like them, I watch their program. I'm not going to say any name because you know, here on, on Google, it's like you're going to be banned if you mention something copyright. Um, but no, so now I've stopped and I am just relying on the Escoffier technique, which is more of a technique, you know, it's like a martial art kind of thing. You've got the grandmaster. And if, if you look at his book, the, anything that's taught in the book, the measurements work. They're precise, they've been tested, and it's not like a commercial book. It's meant for you to succeed and make something work. And that's why I've chosen now to stick just with, uh, which is a chef, Escoffier was a chef, so I'm sticking with him now. Uh, personal question, uh, this is from Flaky Croissant. <laughs> how much have you been, uh, what is, but how much have been the top of your salary in a kitchen? Well, I've never worked in a kitchen. Uh, is that for someone else? Uh, is there any French quick snack or street food? Yeah, the Croque Monsieur is one of the best uh, street food we have, actually. Uh, so glad you said that. I nearly always end up making a recipe once and adjusting it next time. Favorite chicken dish, chicken, some shredded cheese. Uh, Trader Zoo, you know, Christopher Trader Zoo is a German owned company. Awesome. All these stores. Okay, so thanks for uh, you know talking between each other now. Let's move on to the, uh, I'm trying to feed the chat and the, uh, this live session. Sorry guys, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mess. You know, I'm not very organized. Um, so sorry if I jump in the chat and I start talking and I talk about the pantry, whatever. Uh, just, you know, first experience, we'll, we'll just trial it. Uh, now, I wanted to talk about that. The bread, which I've eaten. Uh, bread is, uh, of course, has to be part of the French pantry, but it is such an important item in, in uh, French homes that is not funny. Uh, when I'm here in other countries, or even in Australia, when I was in England, bread is a side thing. Now, in France, if you don't have bread at home at all times, like any family that you're rich to millions or you're like the poorest, you know, uh, there is, you will have at a minimum bread. If you don't have bread, you know, there's a national starvation going around or like there's, you know, there's a, there's a famine. I don't know what's going on, but bread is the thing you always, always have. And when I was there in France the last time and I did the video on the cassoulet with my friend Jerome, we were going every morning to the bakery and you kind of buy the consumption of bread. I want to give you an idea. The consumption of bread in France, it's about minimum, like between two and three baguettes uh, every single day. So when you go to buy bread, it's usually the question like, oh, am I going to buy two baguettes or three baguettes or four? And every day you go in the morning and you need to have that. There's always a stack of bread on the side. <laughs> So baguettes, you can always grab it and make a sandwich. And that's what we do in France. Ah, oh, piece of bread, take some ham, like I did the video on the sandwich, you know, the uh, uh, jambon beurre sandwich or with a piece of uh, sausage or vriette or uh, anything from the charcuterie. And it is such a staple food. Like I cannot live without bread. Like for me, I always have even a small piece, there's always a piece of bread hanging around the kitchen. Otherwise, I think I'd die. There's no bread. My God. Uh, well, I'm going to put this. Yeah. Um, now, let me see in the chat. Uh, on bacon. Another thing uh, on the pantry you need to have for the French pantry, and I will recap, by the way, guys, I will put a, you know, a recap, a text format of all the ingredients for the pantry. So you don't have to watch the video or whatever. I will give you a nice list telling you what are the basic ingredients you need to have. But, of course, uh, when it comes to dressing, always, you know, simple oil, that's peanut oil. It's used a lot in France. Uh, you're going to use some red wine vinegar. And uh, you can use some white wine vinegar as well. So we always have salt, pepper, oil, vinegar, and a lot of time, the mustard. Now, this is uh, 
Again, every single home we have oil, vinegar, salt, pepper, and a lot of time mustard. And usually it's Dijon mustard. Now this is the the base of the French dressing. This is the base of all the, the dressing we use on uh, on salad with uh, avocados, with cucumbers. And we're gonna mix this with all kinds of things. For instance, cream. Uh, we have a recipe called uh, concombre à la crème, uh, cucumbers in a, with cream and dressing. French dressing mixed with a little bit of cream, you know, you mix that together, maybe a little bit of parsley, or a little bit of, a little bit of chives uh, chopped in there. Mix that with fresh, uh, freshly sliced cucumber, boom, you get a starter. So, you know, that's one of the other things that um, we get a lot. I'm going to put this away. And uh, the other thing, oh yeah, I forgot about these ones. Potatoes. When it comes to vegetables, the one thing we have a lot is potatoes. Very, very common. And, um, it's always in the pantry. And then you have like rice. You always, always have a little bit of rice. Pasta as well. We're not Italian, but French people, we have a lot of noodles. So you got rice, you got noodles, and potatoes. And that, that's, that's really the core of the thing there's, there's much much more thing we use but these are the the things you always have like i always have this in my pantry like the, there's always a potato there was always an onion there's always rice there's always pastas and when you ask me what do you eat when you're you know when you're not making the videos well i'm grabbing all the ingredients that you've seen here and usually i'm going to mix that uh, with something eggs sorry i forgot to take the eggs eggs are also part of the mix uh, you use a lot of eggs of course and sugar and flour and that's also from the the dry pantry that's in here i haven't taken everything out and this is gonna allow you to make basically dessert uh, it's gonna allow you to make all kinds of uh, you know thicken some sauces and you can mix all of these ingredients and you can create honestly with what i've shown you so far that's like you couple this with pieces of fish pieces of meat and you will be able uh, to make a lot of dishes. And if you look at my videos, you will see that actually all the things that you've seen here are gonna be mostly the things that I've used in the videos. So you see there's not too much in there. I'm oh, sorry, the chat is going wild a bit there again. Uh, uh, is this something for me? I have an avocado, is peanut oil, uh, is peanut a neutral oil? Yeah. It's, well, it's got a nutty flavor because, of course, if you want something that's um, neutral in flavor, guys, uh, you can use uh, grapeseed oil. It's one of the best oil that is very neutral. It uh, holds very high temperature. You can use it for frying, and it's, uh, and it's a very good quality oil. But it's expensive, so I love to buy it, but it's really, really expensive. Uh, uh, potatoes is simple and non conversation vegetable, yes. Uh, David, uh, food, uh, sorry, I'm reading the chat here again. <laughs> Do you find cassoulet a complex dish? Yes, <laughs> it is extremely complex. It's a long winded process. I do not find Conte cheese in the US. Oh, that I would know about that. I will be making behind the scene video. Would love to see your kitchen and filming equipment. Well, filming equipment, let's talk about. Um, behind the scene because I think the entry <laughs> a talk is is uh, is kind of gonna have tried to do it but I can see it's very difficult so I really enjoy like interacting with you guys and you know let's let's keep the remaining of the time just you know if you have any questions and whatever uh, it's easier for me I watch the chat and I can answer questions and ask you questions um, do you use cumin in cooking yes uh, I do especially when I make a chicken soup. I love the cumin is my uh, cumin seeds. That's what I use. Uh, thank you for the live chat. Have a great evening. I see you even. I guess so they're going to see something so we can get some European goods over. Yeah, I know finding ingredients uh, is really uh, the big thing when you're outside of France. And it is a big limitation for me as well. Uh, we're living in Australia and I'm struggling so many times. I just don't have to. <laughs> the type of meat, the type of poultry, the type of mushrooms, there's so many things uh, I can't get. Uh, so this is one of the reasons I have to keep things, uh, you know, rather simple. I can't uh, go to, to, but one thing I've got, for instance, that I've used in the, um, uh, I've got that shop that sells some French stuff. You see that? Raspberry vinegar. 
That's something that's used in France a lot. But sounds fancy, you see, raspberry vinegar. And what, what the hell? What the hell gets that? <laughs> it's like, and this is, but these are common things. When you're in France, you take it for granted. Uh, can you teach more French soups on your channel? Yes. Arnivan, soups, I know, I know, I know. The other problem I have, uh, sorry everyone as well, is the difference in, in season. You can see it's night time for you guys. And here it's like about 11 o'clock in the morning. When it comes to the season, it's winter at the moment here. And on your side, it's kind of either, uh, you know, spring, summer or anything like that. So I can show soups, but if I start showing, showing soups now, you know, in the like it's winter, I think, oh, I should show some soups. But then people are like, uh, is the summer here? Can you show us salad instead? Oil is an universal language. Oh, Greg Miller. What is that? Uh... Oh, thanks a lot. I think Gregor Miller, uh, you must have used some function that I'm not too much aware of. It must be, is that the super chat that you've just done there? Did a donation to the channel of $10. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Greg, that's uh, unexpected. I didn't even know uh, that was possible in there. Uh, or is it a spam? Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much anyway, uh, uh, Gregor. And to come back to this, uh, you know, the season and everything. And yes, I'll try to do soups and I'll try to be in sync with you guys, but it's very, very um, difficult. Uh, I'm enjoying your interacting here. Yes. Super chess. <laughs> Love making dessert. You love to see more of them. Uh, nothing top real French pastry. Yeah, pastries. Um, your backyard looks lovely. No, no way. <laughs> my backyard? This is the worst thing. You see what's behind me? Now, this is my worst nightmare. Every time I'm filming, I think I need to buy a curtain or something because there's like an air conditioning unit behind me. Look. And this is the worst, ugliest kind of background. But if I cover it, I think the light is going to not come in. And I'm, I'm, it's going to look all very, very dark, as it is already. It is already kind of dark. Uh, USA does have a lot of, doesn't have a lot of soup culture. So I made the soups from my home. Oh, OK. Just wanted to say thanks. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. I see people are coming and going. You see, I have a turnout fantastic. Keep it up. Um, I'm, I'm so get a lace curtain. What is a lace curtain? A lace curtain? What is this? Laces? Is that not for shoes? Don't cover that window. Always envy the beautiful fun weather. Fred window. <laughs> well, you think it's good weather. Melbourne has got the worst weather. It is actually freezing cold. Uh, there are some sunny days. Maybe when I choose my days when I'm filming, but it's not. It's not Sydney. It's not New South Wales or the nice kind of Queensland weather. And I wish I could move. I could move up there and uh, and bring you a, you know better setup with that nice tropical background, you know, and, and make some French cooking like that with the uh, with the uh, thin material for the lace curtain, like in Normandy. Okay. Or maybe I can look it up. It's what I've got in my kitchen windows when it comes in Google Lace Curtain. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, is that for me the question? Are you in the United States? No, I'm in Australia, not in the United States. Uh, answering another question about uh, someone said, I, well, I love to see behind the scene video. Now, you will be amazed that I'm running that channel on an absolute shoestring uh, of a budget, first of all. And my house is not at all <laughs> convenient uh, for that route. Like the kitchen I've, I've got is like a, a galley kitchen. So it's like this long kind of thing, you know, and you got this stove on one side, and, but here I've got a sink on that side, and then you got the, um, the stove on that side here. And all the things I've got is actually like, you see that thing here? This is basically the bench that I've kind of created. Uh, I love it, but it's just an actual plank of wood. I'll post a picture on Instagram, you'll see. Um, that has just put between the two uh, bench tops. But as someone mentioned, I can't get out. <laughs> you can see there's no, I have to go under that thing to get out of here. But that's the only way I can find a kind of a setup where I can sit down like that and have uh, a light. But I'm not using uh, much equipment. And I can show you lace curtains. It's a sort of rideau à la Oh, OK. OK, I see. Now. I can show you one thing about the equipment. Look, 
No, should I take this one? Look at the lights. This is how you get a bit lit up because if I didn't have these lights, look at this. Zzz, let it be light. You see, that's how you actually create the illusion. No, actually, that, that's kind of cheap lights I bought. Um, and I will only have two of those. And uh, it's kind of helpful, but you need those things. But I don't have much. I've got these two lights you've seen here. I've got just a camera. Actually, I could have bring it on there. It's just a Canon 6D Mark II and a tripod. And that's it. You know, it's really, really, uh, I wish I would have more equipment, uh, but I don't. I enjoy your channel and subsequent presentation and simplicity and soft colors are pleasant while watching. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, do the French use a lot of seafood? Oh, yeah, Roman, divinity. Thanks for your question. Yeah, lots, lots of seafood. That's more in the Brittany region. So anything on the seaside, uh, so you think like uh, the north of France, but the, the, you know, the headquarters of seafood is like Brittany. I mean, if you go in Brittany and, and a bit below that, the Vendée region, this is where you've got all the, you know, you get the seafood, you got the, all the crabs and all the shells and all the mussels and all the fish. And uh, the other part is the south of France, huh, the French Riviera. Uh, so that the provincial style, you get much more. It's, there is more fish, a lot of fish, a lot of fish stuff. Uh, very, very good fish. I live in New England and they are now shipping lots of fresh seafood overseas. Yeah, they, well, we, we do have seafood here. Actually, I haven't, sorry about these guys. I haven't been doing much uh, seafood. Uh, I'm actually looking into this, but it's always hard to find what, um, what do you think I should do? I mean, because everyone wants to see something different now. Is there, let me ask you guys some questions. So, so far from what you've seen on the channel, uh, what are the things that you would like to see? What are the things you think are, are lacking? Um, you know, in terms of recipes and things like that. Or if you want to see something that is slightly different about recipes, do you care about seeing uh, more talks and things like this? Or more like pure, tutorial on how to do like you know cutting techniques or how to do certain things how exactly um, you know the approach when you come to that channel and you watch it are you coming for the recipes or are you coming for uh, just when the you know the interaction or the entertainment or just seeing French food or what is it exactly because I never exactly know you know when you're behind a camera you're just alone in your kitchen facing your camera so it's kind of hard you, you don't know what's going on as a student, a couple of budget recipe would be appreciated. Yeah. Now, if, of course, French food, well, French food and budget. Um, yeah, it's it's. We don't have two. When it's budget recipe, like I said, it's gonna be like noodles with butter and cheese. You know, it's like it's, it's like less than budget. It's not even a recipe. It's like basically almost children food. You know, you just throw one thing or. Um, you know what's happening about, uh, to answer the question, uh, more dessert, about the, uh, you know, the, the cheap recipe for students, you know what's happening in France is that we've got a lot of tin food. Because the tin food in France is a ready-made food, you can find it a lot and it's of really good quality. And if you go to the supermarket, you don't have to cook. And this is why there's not too much in France because Honestly, next time, I'm, next time I'm in France, I'm going to take you along. I'm going to do like a live, a live stream or something. I'll take a phone or something like that or an iPad, and I'll show you what I mean in the supermarket. There is like aisles full of ready-made meal. Like the cassoulet you've seen on the video, you can buy that. You can buy that ready-made, and you get like five different quality types you can buy. You know, you can buy any vegetable, any dishes, anything you want is like pre-made. Uh, and you don't have to cook, you don't have to do anything. And it don't cost many, uh, much money. That's why usually, uh, that's what people do. And I would need to do like uh, maybe an unboxing of, um, would that be something for me in France next? An unboxing of like teen food in France, how amazing it can get. Uh, you seem to be the only one who covers this screen in French cooking. Ask if we would attend a class, give one. Okay, two question, two interesting questions here. Um, it's true that that's been one of my thing. When you look on the internet, French cooking, really, it's been um, a subject that's not being done too much. Uh, and yeah, I don't see too many channels doing it. But in the same token, it's not something that's super, super popular. 
So I'm really glad that at least we have a following like you guys. Uh, but it's not like we're like, you know, thousands of people uh, uh, coming in every day, you know, to do the, the French food. So I've got a feeling that French food is maybe not in fashion at all. Like people see it like as, as an old fashioned thing or something like that. No, thanks, Trish. Want to learn the cooking on you? I want to learn about cooking on high heat. Um, well, we don't really cook uh, on high heat too too much in 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 France. That's more like just for to you know to get some color on the food. But most of the French cooking is actually pretty chill out in terms of temperature. Uh, the uh, the French would have a, check, a snack cheese as well. Yeah, it's called the boursin. <laughs> that's that's what everybody eats in France. The boursin cheese, which is like a fresh, like cream cheese with herbs, and a traditional French recipe that are deconstructed. Maybe uh, it's hard to deconstruct recipes because they're already hard to do when they are not not deconstructed. So if you go in, if, even further, I would need much more time to do this. Uh, see a bouillabaisse recipe? Yeah, we could do that. Uh, smoke oyster on cracker with cheese. Uh, travel vlog. Yeah, next time I'm going in France, I've got some plans. Um, to do this as well. Most people just eat potato chips. <laughs> uh, when it comes to the cooking class, uh, this is something I'm actually working on, uh, just to let you know, guys, for the ones that are watching here. I've got some kind of plan uh, thinking about, of course, when I did that post on Google, by the way, guys, I was not asking people, my English is terrible, that's why don't, don't mind me when I write. I was not saying that you need to have, uh, you need to come to Australia to have a cooking class. I was just generally speaking, do you think it's worth my while of, you know, continuing the idea of me doing a live cooking class? Do you think people would even enjoy it? Because I'm not a professional, you know, type of, you know, um, a trainer or whatever, like, you know, things like that. So I'm saying just in Australia, if I was to do that for the local crowd, you know, uh, imagine if you were in Australia, if you were in Australia, would you actually think, the teaching is worth it. It was worth attending. That, that was the, qu the question. And uh, doing classes, yes, is something I'm working on. What I really would like to do, and this is why I'm exploring that live function today, um, is how could I bring the live, the interaction, and the cooking class together? Uh, and that's a hard thing. I mean, the technology is kind of around. I don't have the materials yet. I don't have the equipment. But I'm starting to look at options where I could have a setup with multiple camera and I, I want to stream from multiple angles. So not just like missing it because this is, you know, this, you know that's nothing. Uh, but really have like a camera on the stove, a camera where I can do like the, the food prep and try to run a proper class that we can just do live. So people can join in. And then we can see it live, and then you can ask questions or anything like that. <laughs> My fingers <laughs> uh, But this is not for now. Um, and the main reason for that is that you need a very, very good internet connection uh, when it comes to the um, to the live stream. And uh, I'm really not sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure the quality of that stream is going to be really bad. <laughs> like you may hear me. I don't know about the picture and stuff like that. But uh, I know that. My internet provider told me that they are actually building a high-speed internet connection in my area. And 2019, they said it will be kind of uh, ready. So when I've got that super-duper internet connection, uh, that's for later on. But you can expect maybe a big change on the channel where I'm going to try to run live cooking classes from here that you can follow live, ask questions, and uh, we'll see how it goes. My uh, problem, my back nerve, spinal nerve, I broke me like I'm feeling empty, my blood pressure, I'm standing. Talking about back problem, you know that uh, that's one of the reasons, by the way, I'm doing a live today, guys, because I've actually injured my back last week, um, doing something stupid. I was just tidying things up and putting some pans quickly in my dishwasher. And uh, surely after too much, like trying to do some exercise, I've kind of twisted my back and now I've got like the lower back, uh, like near the spine or something. There's something that's like your nerves got stuck. And I could not walk like for like one or two days. 
Uh, that was terrible. And even now, I'm not, I can still, it's painful when I sit for a long period of time or walk, walk for a long period of time. It, it's, it's a problem. So that's crazy how you can enjoy yourself. So make sure always use a good posture. If you if you're in the, at home or whatever, that's very important. You know, people keep on reminding. But I've been really reminded that time that this is serious business. You know, uh, invest your hang up silent. Hey Stefan, I think you are too critical of yourself. Quality, etc. Helen, thanks Helen. Uh, too critical? No, I didn't. Uh, well. I, I didn't go to the doctor per se because it kind of unlocked itself, uh, my back. So now it's getting better, but I took some anti-inflammatory. I went to the pharmacy to talk about it, and that's what they told me. Um, yeah, too critical about myself. Um, I think I'm a bit of a perfectionist in some ways. Uh, but you know what? To be honest, when you're doing this stuff, uh, if you want to be live online, if you want to do a channel, I mean, you kind of have to be critical, you need to look at what's out there. And um, yeah, maybe I'm a bit too critical in some time, but if you, on the other hand, if you start to be too non-critical, you're gonna, you're gonna kind of get complacent with your things and you're gonna be like, oh, it's fine, you know? And before you know it, the whole side, other people are gonna catch up and, and you're gonna be like, really terrible. And already my production is not up to scratch. I can, I can guarantee I've got some, uh, you know, friends I'm seeing of some uh, channel I'm following, you got much better stuff and they have been doing this for even less le less time than, uh, than, than I. So it's okay to be a perfectionist. It means you care about what you're doing. Uh, thanks so much, you're a great chef. You have been very well. Oh, thanks for that, Marina. Bruno Albuz, yeah, yeah, I've watched his video. Yeah, it's, it's a fun guy. What if this, what, what, this is one of the, uh, uh, you know, French guys that are uh, doing that French stuff. Like, I think we must be like, I think I know about five channels on the internet uh, in, in total that exist doing real French stuff. And I'm surprised that we've got so few, uh, I mean, compared to other channels, like, you know, even Bruno Albu is now, it's getting like some decent number, like 500K or something like that. He's been doing this for a long time and he's even in America. So he can really relate to the people. Uh, I'm amazed there's not more views and stuff, you know? Like, I really think that the channel is it's so hard to get any kind of momentum. I mean, in Australia, I mean, you know, I've been doing this for three years. And I mean, when I get a video that's got, if I get 10,000 views in a week, uh, it's, it's, it's good, you know? And, and in the YouTube world today, when you talk to someone doing gaming or whatever, I mean, these guys are getting like, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 views, just like that, you know, on random subjects. So you kind of think, uh, is there a problem there? Or so it's, sometimes it is a bit difficult and worrying because you think, well, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing here, but I, I, I like to have, let me tell you one thing. Oh, thanks, Jason. I thought about doing a video in French. Yes, I thought about that. Video in French, I've absolutely uh, thought about this, but I was worried that, um, you know, if I do it in French, nobody's going to understand. So I was like, okay, so what's the point? Like, am I going to attend to the French market? Or is it going to be like, I'm going to, uh, you know, just want to do this for the fun so that everyone can hear me. So I could do one, uh, but I will surely do, uh, I plan on doing this uh, whenever I go to France next, I'm going to try to do some collaborations with other channels and that will be in French. So we're going to do some fun stuff and, uh, and try to change things. Uh, how butter, uh, how much butter and sugar is recommended for a person per week? Uh, oh, that I don't know. I think you will have a high quality. Oh, enjoy watching. Thanks. Jens Kelly correct. As long as you subtitle, it's okay. Oh yeah, subtitles. Hey, by the way, guys, uh, now that you're here, if anyone, um, wants to help on the channel. Uh, I never say that, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very open for everyone to, to give a hand. So especially when it comes to translation, if you like have another language like Portuguese or Spanish or, um, you know, an Asian language or anything like that. And if you're keen on, on uh, doing a translation, if you can understand my English and put the translation, I, I can enable that uh, translation bit on the channel uh, to, to have you guys to allow you to put a translation. So like this may be in your country, if you share the video, you can say, hey, um, yeah, these are the instructions. So. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm looking for help at the moment. Uh, yeah, Hindi, you know, whatever language. Uh, yeah, I don't even, 
not a problem. If, if you can understand enough the, what I'm saying <laughs> in English, wait, Holy King, you're not in France. No, unfortunately, at the moment, I'm not in France. And the project would be way different. Next time I'm in France, honestly speaking, next time I'm going in France, I'm going to take you to the places. I'm going to take you where it's at, the good stuff. See, like, the real poultry, the real mushroom, where they do the foie gras, where they do the truffles, all this stuff, you know, to see the real thing. Not the kind of supermarket market things in, the, in here. It's not to criticize whatever, but I'm just saying... France is just like one big bloody garden. Like you got everything in there. Um, just crazy. Uh, I know Hindi. Uh, you curious that an efficient thing to improve the view is to tell people and being a video to click on the thumbs up. Yeah, but you know, I don't want to go in that thing like telling people every time, oh, click the thumbs up. You know? uh, one thing I've learned recently, um, and I like to say thanks to you, thanks to you all guys that are watching and, and following the channel is that I'm watching other, uh, like the gaming, you know that gaming kind of realm? Uh, because people were telling me, oh, you need to do live stuff. You, need, you know, And that's why I was doing that live things. And they were like, oh, you need to go live and do something live. And uh, look at this gaming channel on Twitch. Uh, you can do uh, something on Twitch live. And I started to look at the community of people doing things live. <clears throat> and honestly, it is so cutthroat. Like the gaming community has been so cutthroat. Like everyone you know, fighting and being aggressive and there's all kinds of things. And I'm thinking, well, you know what? I'm happy that maybe I have got a smaller following on my channel here, but all the people, like all of you guys, you've been really amazing. I mean, I hardly have any, you know, the course of three years, you'll, you'll be amazed that, you know, we talk about trolling and things like that. I mean, it's very rare that I even see a comment in all the videos I've made that people that have really started to go on a row about something or to, you know, to be really annoying. There's been, you know, rarely some occasion, but that's the nature of the beast, you know. But compared to what I've seen, I mean, this is insane. I mean, you guys are golden. Uh, you know, as a community, honestly, you are like, you know, like zen, peaceful, and, and I like that, you know. I'm kind of that chill out person, if you want to know me more. I'm not like, uh, you know, the fighter. I'm not going to go like, oh, you know. No, I, I like a peaceful world, you know. And, uh, that's what cooking uh, is good, you know. We like, you know, to get together. I think it's a good thing to uh, to be together, enjoy enjoy a meal, making some food. I mean, it's all about sharing, you know, in family and friends. And, and I think that's what French cooking is all about, really. Uh, cooking channel blood sport. <laughs> I agree, with it, man. The only drama that comes to mind is with this... Uh, to make first one, uh, find you on live. Love you. Oh my god, someone find me here first on live DB2. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Welcome to uh, DB2. Like, I didn't even know, I didn't even know that people could find me online. I'm so, I'm so ignorant. My god, when it, when it comes to bloody uh, YouTube, like, this is my first live, by the way, guys. Uh, so I'm totally out of look. I said it was a one hour chat. I think it's I think it says one hour twenty three minutes. <laughs> Who cares? You know. Uh, but what I'll do, I'll get some water there. Uh, oh. So you know, I'm amazed. I didn't even know that you could find me actually on. Um, is there a live section on YouTube? Like, is there something you can search for live stuff? I mean, my God, I need to, I need to research all that stuff. Um, do a collaboration with Justin Lecomte, food and fashion. Oh. Where is that person located, Holly King? Uh, hook up with someone in your area. Well, um, you know what? I've tried to do that collaboration with some people uh, over here, and I've tried to reach out sometimes. Nobody replied. I don't know what it is. I think when sometimes people see me or something, I don't, I don't know, maybe they think my channel is rubbish or it's like, you know, well, I don't know, I'm going to scare people. I'm not that scary, isn't it? I don't look like, uh, you know, I'm going to aggress people. Hey, it's Holly King. Justin is awesome. Uh, Justin, well, uh, put this in the, yeah, I don't know if, the, no, there's no comment section. I, I, I don't know if we can see these chats. Uh, just send me an email. Uh, guys, you can always use the email or the contact form, or use the French cooking, uh, French cooking, uh, the French cooking academy 
at gmail.com. I don't know, don't forget you can use that uh, email address anytime you want. In my subscription, it shows up you were live. Oh yes, if you go live again, post you will be alive a day before. Why well, did this? That live thing, you know what? I've used that function uh, three days ago. I think uh, I tried to send something on YouTube and YouTube told me that if I put it as an event, it will tell people beforehand. Uh, and I did that. Nothing, nothing was showing up. That's what I was thinking. So I'm not even sure what I did wrong. What do you guys think of uh, trying Google Hangout next time? I don't want to do that too often because the quality is really bad. So, I, you know, uh, it's not going to be great. But there is an option go uh, on, on the live stream that I can also use Google Hangout. And then I think you guys can join in even with a video. I <laughs> think, But that's going to be messy. <laughs> it's just like 60 people with a video. I can't even know if I can see the screen. I don't have Hangout. I don't even know how it works, Hangouts, to be honest. We should all meet in person. Well, yes. Uh, sometimes, yeah. You know, YouTube is fine. Okay, sounds too messy. But isn't that part of of Google? Well, look, I don't know whether if you have a computer. Honestly, look at it. I know if in the live stream, if you try it for yourself, uh, if you have a small channel or anything, if you can try that function, if you do an event. It kind of direct, uh, redirect you to a uh, to a Google Hangout. So I don't know if people can just chat and it's just like a video like now. You will see exactly the same, or if it's going to be different. Maybe I just need to to try it out with. Uh... So just make a short video and say I'll be live on Sunday. Time is going to be hard with all the time zone. <laughs> yes, you know what? Finding the right time to make that live show, and I think now it's 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 still bad because. People, it was like two o'clock in the morning in, in like in France and in Europe. Uh, so unless uh, if I do it at night here, it's a good time for everyone. But then it's dark here, so I'm like in the dark with the two lamps. You don't like <laughs> look at the bloody ghost. Uh, this is wonderful. You must live stream more often, Dimon. I have a teleportation machine. <laughs> Won't be able to join showing live, but you love watching live when I can. Uh, YouTube is easier than Hangout. Very similar. Okay. No clue how to use Google. Okay, so we'll stick to YouTube. Now, sorry to ask you again, but how is the quality on your end? Like, globally speaking, do you guys, is it is it choppy? Or is it like kind of blocky? Like you got all the the kind of the blocky image or is it kind of, uh, kind of okay? Speaking of meeting, um, are there any cooking convention at all on these things? Clear for me, good quality. Looks clear. Well, look, if it looks clear, we can um, we can do that more often. But uh, OK, so let's talk about cultivating that live business here and, and how can uh, can we use it now? What do you think is the most appropriate format for that live? Do you want to have a strict subject like we start the live and we're going to talk about something? And I say, OK, today we're going to talk about pairing one and then I'm going to talk chat, 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 and you can ask question. Hi from Brazil. Hey, Tulo. Hello. Uh, yes. How do you see the live going? Do you think uh, Do you think it would be a good thing just to do question like this, or just to interact, or do you want more of a purpose to it? It's pretty good. When you move, it's choppy, but it's clear when you sit still. Okay, I'll do the statue then. <laughs> And I've got a big problem. I'm always moving too much. Maybe start with a single subject and talk about it till the end. Then do a Q&A after. Jason Lozano. Thanks, Jason. Uh, John. John, so you're thinking I should mix it up? OK. A focus would be good. All right, I can see. Hi from Washington. Hi, Jennifer. How are you doing? Like to be nice to set a topic. Yeah, okay. You're the captain of the ship, uh, but the options are nice. Yes, Nicolas, I know. Uh, I know it's always like you know you're you're in charge of the captain. Um, 
but you know, I, I need to keep in mind that you guys are the people watching as well, you know. So as much as I want to say yes, we're going to do this, you know, sometimes as as human being, we don't ever have the the best ideas. You know, you, you may think you got a great idea, and people are going to like, yeah, you know, it's a bit boring. Um, but yeah, it's it's a good mix and match. But I think I think you're right. Maybe if we know all, like this is the first. I think look, this is the first time. So it's a bit messy, but it's great because. <laughs> I think it's first time for you, first time for me. Uh, so it's good to answer some questions, just chat. And uh, and next time, I think you're right. We'll, we'll try to pick a subject. So like everybody knows when you come, we'll, we'll do it like a kind of a little class. So you'll come in and uh, we'll start talking about the subject straight away. Uh, so we'll limit the, the questions. And then when we, uh, hey, Walter. My God, thanks for your long time subscriber, Walter Morin. Hey, from Brazil. Glad to see you, man. Sorry about the excitement. Yeah, Walter has been, uh, you know, following me on Instagram and, uh, and and the channel a lot of time and sending me emails and stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, glad to see you here. I like the laid back approach. Uh, good and heavy flow. This is a great learning experience. Holy King, you're doing fine. Well, thank you very much. But yeah, yeah, maybe we could do that. Um, so how often do you think a live should uh, take place? Like every month or every two weeks or this is great. It will only get better. Uh, you could do a poll like two days beforehand just to get a feel for what people are into. Yes, the poll. Yes, Jason. About the poll. Yeah, the poll is good, but it's like... Uh, you know, you get like, uh, you, you ask this, but then you have to prepare in a very, very kind of short period of time. So yeah, maybe if I choose a few subjects and then do a poll and I'll ask us for a question in a video before you're live and you pick. Okay. Great to see you, <laughs> Walter. Great to see you live. Yes, I know. Do you think it's different? Jessica, we're, Jessica is saying something to every two weeks. Okay. Live every two weeks. Yeah, okay. That could work. I think at least once a month for sure. Okay, one live event is enough at the beginning. Yeah, we don't want to kind of overdo the live stuff because otherwise it's gonna uh, it's gonna be uh, Instagram. What do you mean, Christopher Baker? What do you mean by Instagram? Every two weeks would be good. Okay, begin with once a month. Okay, what have been the newest ingredient to introduce itself to French cuisine? The newest ingredients to be introduced uh, to introduce itself to French cuisine. Uh, I think let me put that chair a bit down. I think the newest ingredient. Well, you know what? I'm not in France, so I, I'm not keeping up very well with the latest thing. Really, I know that Szechuan pepper when I was there was one of the things that started to appear. And it's kind of all these Asian spices like cardamom now is being used in dessert. That's an Indian spice. Oh, I love cardamom. Cardamom. I mean, this thing is insane. Like you got like the normal yellow cardamom uh, uh, that you can use, but you got the black one as well, like the smoky cardamom. And that thing is like, you can use it in desserts and other things. It's just plain amazing. Uh, have people post their question on your Instagram and you pick the question. Can you post question on Instagram? I thought you can only post pictures. Can you also do the talk about non-cooking subject? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I'm fine to do anything. Look, for me, the live, honestly, the good thing about it, there is no editing required when this is finished. It's like, as soon as we hang up, it's like, yay, it's transformed into an, a video automatically by YouTube. So I don't have to do anything. I can just have a coffee and relax and the thing will work its way in the background. How amazing is that? It also makes it easy to post several apps at the same time. Cooking Alam, yeah, the, the Cooking Alam, that's uh, from Brittany, actually. Yeah, very good, but um, making, uh, yeah, that puff pastry is always from scratch. Is it, uh, post a reply on Instagram. There's a new option on Instagram story where you can have your followers ask questions. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, talking about uh, social media and, and the channel in general and where things are going. Now, I'm working on something at the moment uh, because I want this channel to be kind of the people channel. I want it to be a bit like the place where uh, if you feel like you want to help, if you want to contribute with recipes on websites or on translation or anything, 
I'm really opening the doors. And what I'm uh, what I'm doing locally in Melbourne, I'm, uh, I've actually posted an ad for uh, um, students that are uh, at uni at the moment that are studying studying like social media marketing, video production, and anything. I'm trying to get a little team uh, of people to come and help um, and add their you know their flair to the things and maybe to the video editing or maybe for the social media or whatever thing so i'm going to try to get some people and you might see some things improve or change on the channel so be aware of that um and when it happens I, if i got a team of um of uh, you know young person because they're surely younger than me they got fresh ideas uh, i would love that you know uh, to get a bit of a a bit of a kickstart let me see. instagram story does not work on a laptop or computer i'd avoid that okay okay and then thanks um but it's delicious stream what video editing program are you using oh yeah sorry abby i uh, had this question before yes i'm using a very simple one it's uh, adobe elements adobe uh, yes adobe elements so you got adobe premiere like that's like the um the professional version you know like uh, like on mac uh, you get a very complex version and adobe premiere is like that kind of uh home slash it's better than a home thing but it's kind of uh enthusiast level kind of thing and honestly that software is really easy to use it doesn't cost the bank like 60 dollars and you can really do all the things you know the basic stuff like transition put music put effects there's plenty i'm not even using the full potential of it really good could you make a list of basic tools? Yes, I'm prepared. Yeah, I was working on that actually. Um, this is my first live to watch live. Is great, Jessica Bayer. <laughs> yes, yes, it's my first live as well, Jessica. Uh, yeah, feels a bit uh, feels a bit funny, but it's, yeah, it's interesting. I love the interaction. Someone buy the Frozen and Traders Joe again. Trader is Traders Joe in, in Australia or is he? They are from France. You guys are talking about Traders Joe. Now, who's Traders Joe? Is it like a, is it a supplier? Hey, Walter, how about you prepare the full French style meal? Amuse bouche, first dish, main course, and dessert to go with the guidance on creating a meal that makes sense together. Well, Walter, the, diff the difficulty with that is that um, time <laughs> is a big factor. And when I'm recording a video, so that you know, every time I'm making a video recipe, especially the big long wind one, like the Escoffier one, that takes in total about five hours to shoot. Um, between all the, the angles, the, the, one th the things you want to do, you have to wait for it to cook. So if I was to do like a whole series like that, you end up with like really huge video that are really hard to digest. Uh, so perhaps if I had a live format, then you can kind of be in the kitchen and do your thing. Um, I'll try to do as a supermarket in the US. Yeah, maybe I could do a, you know like that free course thing, but I think it would be hard to give that uh, Walter to give that that whole thing at you know make that whole thing at once and and make it coherent. Um, that's where live cooking class are about because if I was doing a class and I had like you know several hours or you could spend you know five hours six hours, then you could kind of prepare something like that. Uh, Trader Joe, Trader Joe is owned by Aldi. Okay. Oh, thanks for that. I didn't know. We don't have Trader Joe here, so this is different outside. Across a month instead, uh, the course idea is across a month instead and into one video. Uh, could go across a month. Ah, like like a series. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Why not? I mean, when it comes to menu. Um, in, in France, you know, you uh, we, even the, the families at home, like we all have like very simple recipes, uh, you know, that are done like for starters, you can have like a cucumber salad to start with, with some pate, and you get, you're gonna have lettuce, like uh, usually it's butter lettuce, just plain lettuce to have uh, maybe at the end of the meal. And then there's a main course, and then you, you have vegetables, and you usually have just like a, a simple dessert. But they're not like, amazing things and like i said a lot of things comes from the supermarket like there's a lot of ready-made desserts the ready-made puddings and a lot of french family that's what they use you know they don't make this like 
uh, unless it's an occasion. We don't make this massive kind of you know free course. Uh, that's why I'm doing on a channel. That's the old way of doing things. You know, that's where they used to do things. Nowadays, gold didn't go down. I didn't know it takes that long. Yeah, yeah, no production. Yeah, you guys don't know that. <laughs> you know, that's this is what it's all about. When you when you're on YouTube and you make videos, people really you, you know you you just uh, don't know how much time is needed to run a YouTube channel. It's insane. It's insane. Even if you do like I'm doing, like just one video a week, you can spend like you know your whole week preparing, thinking of the ingredients, how you're going to do it, uh, all the filming, the editing, uh, the picture taking, uh, the cooking times, uh, the presentation, then you need to uh, you know, respond to uh, social media, there's all the messages on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. It, it's a whole, it's a, it's a daily job. I mean, you, you always, I mean, I'm receiving comments now. As I, as I speak live, I can see these comments from from other things coming out uh, on the sides. So it's never ending. A lot of work. Raw chicken is too pricey. What's your favorite French dish to make? Now, I had that question uh, not long ago. Uh, I don't have a favorite French dish. And I think a lot of cooks in French food, they will tell you kind of the same. Um, for me, what's important when I make food, uh, I get bored very easily. This is why I did this channel, because I love to make different things every single time. So what excites me, it's really to get a, um, you know, to, to get a dish that I haven't done before, that's using a technique I haven't done before, and most important, to taste something I haven't tasted before, like something that's just a bit different, you know, it's using some spice, some uh, cider, or especially like I was, I wanted to talk about cider, or specific wines, or a specific liquor, or any kind of twist of taste. That's, that's what I read of doing. Do you have plans to let us publish our recipes? Uh, what do you mean online, Walter? Or do you mean on the website? The website still has that function when you can post the recipes, but it doesn't seem to be working very well. But if you have recipes, by the way, as you want to post, guys, if you want to send them in a text format, uh, not a problem. Just send me an email, thefrenchcookingacademy at gmail.com. Uh, it's in the About page on my channel. And just send me your recipe with a picture or a set of pictures, and I will just put it as a post on the website. You know, I'm happy to do that. Not a problem. Hey, Jason, thank you very much. <laughs> One culture food, do you like to cook? Uh, so like I was saying before, uh, I cook a lot of Indian food, actually. That's the easiest uh, for me to do because uh, you can get all the spices. But I love to do other foods as well. Uh, sometimes some Asian foods, sometimes, um, like I'm saying, North African food. Like I said, there's a big influence with Morocco, uh, Algeria, and Tunisia, and France. And uh, maybe I should do a video on that. What do you guys think? What about like, a, like the allies of France, or like the countries that are like uh, the influence, like the, the couscous royal? It's called the royal couscous, which is a big pot of. Uh, uh, it's called semolina or something. You know, it's like this kind of grain, like bulgur, like a mountain of it, and which is served on top with a, a lamb shank uh, that is uh, cooked in a harissa, base, like a spicy kind of tomato sauce with vegetables. And then you got uh, spicy sausages on top, uh, lamb skewers, uh, uh, two grilled chickens, uh, the vegetables, the sauce, and it's like a, a royal dish uh, that's served in Morocco. It's, it's really enjoyable, it's amazing. Uh, what do you eat when you're not shooting video? I've been asked uh, that question before. Uh, I'm actually uh, eating a bit of everything. So yesterday I did, for instance, a ratatouille. Uh, uh, I bought uh, actually some lentils at the market yesterday. That's, that's the lentils we've seen before, the Dupre lentils. And I've got some um, French style sausages. So at lunch, uh, or at dinner, I'm gonna make this. For this week, I bought uh, fish fillets, monkfish, and I'm, I'm just using them like to keep the things light because French food is, is heavy, so in, when I'm not doing the videos, I'm eating quite light. So I'm just going to do a fresh fish fillet, pan fried in butter with a little bit of lemon, and I usually eat this with uh, you know, a side of vegetable, uh, you know, sauté potatoes, or just a little, a little bit of rice or just salad. You know, it's very, um, very simple. 
simple simple stuff uh i like the path your channel is on at the moment the live stream is a treat <laughs> looking forward to the future yeah it's uh, the yeah, live stream you know what happened with the live stream uh oh thanks walter yeah yeah email me man no problem uh yeah, yeah i'm keeping healthy the uh yeah the live thing actually um some of you <laughs> have seen me i was on i was on my ipad and I've seen that function. Oh, that's kind of a new function. It says new in, the, in my YouTube. It says live. It says camera live. You can use your camera. So I've clicked on that to see what it was. And I followed the prompt. And it was like middle of the night. I was like in my uh, track pants and uh, horrible T-shirts. And somehow I clicked on that thing. It went live. And then people started to come on. <laughs> Say, oh, hi, you're sideways. And I had my picture sideways. And I was oh, my God. I'm the worst at these things. Like, you know, so I, sorry for the, if you've seen that, I've just cut the, after just a, a minute or something, I just cut the, the feed. But, um, so I was like, suddenly I didn't know you could do a live, like with just the computer. Like, you know, I don't have a, a, a software to hook up to the computer. It's just basically integrated into YouTube. Uh, with picture grade, you may you the print, uh, Branda de Moreau. Yes, Walter, with pictures, yeah, no problem. Track pens, yes. Is that, that what you call them? Track pens, yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, this kind of home thing you put on, like, like a pyjama style. Uh, are you, were you ever a professional chef? No. Hi from the UK, Hedgehog. My God, there's, there's more people coming in and out of the chat, so I'm just uh, answering new questions, so yeah. Hi for the newcomer, Hedgehog. Uh, yeah, hi from the UK. S sweatpants. <laughs> That's it. The most. Sweatpants. <laughs> is there such thing as a sweatpants? Like, what is she supposed to do with that? Sweat in your pants? This is like this was a sweatpants. I'm gonna put my sweatpants on. Be careful. <laughs> like, so is it like a sport thing for working out? Oh, that's what you. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what you call them, like the American way of cutting track pants. Yeah, actually, track. Yeah, track sweats. Uh, in French, we uh, we call them uh, jogging. I think it's, it's an English word. Uh, like jog, a pair of jogging, that's what we call them. Yes, we have funny, funny packs. <laughs> like funny packs. Uh, which specific red wine do you recommend for sauces? So red wine, actually, if you missed the stream, I was, I was showing, um, you know, some wine. I'm usually using uh, either a Côte du Rhône, that's like a, a Lyrac, it's like Chateau of Dupap style. Chateau of Dupap is not bad, but it's too expensive, but you can get some uh, similar things. But anything from the Côte du Rhône or a Bordeaux, uh, because of the strength of the wine for the sauces. You see, if you use something, uh, if you use something that's um, a bit too light, like a Burgundy, sometimes you sauce. Uh, or the taste would not go through the meat. So like the Coco Vins, a lot of people, it's meant to be with a burgundy one, but a lot of people have made it and some people say, yeah, it, the taste didn't go through uh, the meat. So maybe people prefer like a Shiraz, you know, like a Bordeaux style wine. Itzy.com, <laughs> we're a funny bug. Should be illegal. <laughs> I track more polyester and there's jogging pants over here. Well, look, you have to say, you have to give credit to the sweat track pants or whatever it's called or fanny packs or whatever it is, uh, that these things are comfortable at home. I mean, uh, especially when I had my back injured like, like a few days ago, you know, you, it's like you're in rehab, you know, you're just like putting that pants on and just like putting around the house, you know, just watching television and doing nothing. Just, uh, just horrid. <laughs> yeah. Many faux pas. Yes. Is it legal in France to modify French classic dishes? Yes. Well, this is the story, guys. I'm not, um, I don't, you know, it's not like I'm making a channel, like I'm saying like, oh, this is the gospel truth of the dish. You have to do it this way. You cannot change it. Um, not at all. You know, I'm, I'm you know, 
I'm living abroad, uh, so I'm kind of an open person. And yes, you can you can change the dishes. What I'm showing you is basically the traditional ways, the old ways of making um, dishes the way it's meant to be made. Now, once you, my advice is once you have the base recipe covered, you, you've done it, you know the taste, and you think you can add something different, oh yeah, you can do it. In France, of course, if you start changing things, people are going to be like, oh my God, no, this is not, this is not the real recipe. Um, because something you may not know is that as much as, uh, you know, these wines, like, um, I'm going to put it here because I'm grabbing it all the time. So these bottles of wine, so like the Chablis, for instance, you know, that uh, Bourbon white, uh, it's got that thing, it's, I don't know if you can see here, it says here, Appellation Petit Chablis Contrôlé. So it says basically that the name is kind of uh, registered and protected, and, and you know, it can only be called that in a certain region. And we know that about wine, right? So you know that wines, they got all these appellation, this classification. But food in France, like I was joking about these things, to recap some of the video I've done, I was joking about the lentils, you know, that was the lentils, uh, the Dupree lentils. But like these lentils, these are classified and they are uh, registered as a, almost like a trademark in France. Uh, and can only be grown and called like that in a certain area in France. And this is the same for a lot of food in France. Actually, a lot of recipes even have strictly, uh, they have to be made strictly by the book, otherwise you cannot call them uh, a certain name. You know, so when you make uh, certain dishes, it's gonna say, no, nah, that dish is gonna have to have this, 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 and that. And for instance, it's gonna say, okay, the real, uh, perhaps the real recipe, uh, you know, for Cocovin or Beuve Bourguignon, say originally you have to use a, a Burgundy red. And people will say, oh, but I'm using a, a Bordeaux red. And so what is different then? So there is, uh, oh my goodness, even comments popping up everywhere outside of the chat now. Uh, yes, there is a big, uh, you know, big thing about food and how it's, uh, it's classified. This is why people get crazy when you change. Are the influence from other France areas, other French uh, speaking countries? Yes. Uh, yeah, so influence in France about other, like I was saying, what we have in France, it's uh, we've got the, uh, the north of Africa and the west of Africa is French speaking. So we got African food, North African food, and we got also the Creole uh, type of food, uh, West Indies, we've got some islands as well as the um, Indian Ocean. And you got the Maldives. Uh, island and we got the Réunion Island, so we get a lot of Creole food and uh, that old-fashioned uh, food from the uh, uh, from those islands. So there are a lot of exotic flavors, and this is where we get the spices. Huh? So we've got that uh, Scotch bonnet um, pepper, like the this little super spicy pepper, and these come from the islands. And this is what came after this influence. We call it the Creole, uh, the cuisine Creole. That's what it's called. When do you use sherry port, cognac, etc.? Um, the cherry, port, cognac, and all the liqueurs, they are usually used for uh, sauces and marinades. That's why you use them the most. Uh, bacon, potato, and liver casserole, please. Uh, a liver casserole? Uh. Okay, I haven't come around that, but I can look it up. Uh, starting with the meal, what do you have for... Uh, starting with what meal do you have? Wine or aperitif? Well, you know what? Something again about wines, because people want to talk about wine here. I personally think, uh, personally, that the more I, I eat and drink, that I enjoy more and more drinking wine before eating. I kind of think that in some occasion, like white wine like this, again, the Chablis, 100% uh, Chardonnay, but it's a dry white wine, with seafood and stuff like that, it's fine. You know, you can eat mussels and stuff like that. The white wine is kind of a good pairing wine to have with food. Red wine, on the other hand, honestly, I'm having difficulty to find it ever super enjoyable unless you have a sauce that has been cooked with the wine. That, that's, that's my experience. Honestly, that's my experience. I only like wine when you use it in a dish 
like a cocoa vin, whatever, and you use the same wine that's in the sauce to to uh, to eat as a pairing because there's a connection. But when you use wine, it's got nothing to do with anything. Like a piece of fish with a red wine, nah, it's, you know, I rather drink a sparkling water. What's the history of uh, Basque? Uh, Oh, well, that's complex. The Basque story, uh, that goes, uh, my God, uh, you need to go in the history book for that. That's, uh, that's a very, very, very old history. Uh, and I wouldn't say anything, because if I say anything wrong, <laughs> I'm going to get the, the lightnings from uh, from uh, from above coming. Like, uh, could you show us a recipe that used butterscotch? I'm not sure what butterscotch is. A molecular recipe, a gastronomy recipe, no, because I've got, I know nothing about it, and I would be, no, I would be terrible at that. Thanks for the live video. I must leave now. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, yes, my God. Hey, but guys, um, not that I want to be uh, <laughs> uh, leaving soon. I've said the chat uh, was meant to be an hour, so I'm gonna keep it at two hours because otherwise the upload is gonna be immensely huge. And it's one hour fifty-five minutes uh, at a time here. So let's we're gonna wrap it up in five minutes time. Just like keep it to two hours, and uh, yeah, you can send me in the comment, or we can. I'll, I'll check. I'll try to do the check that Instagram or whatever function to try to see if we do another uh, a stream. I thought the quality was gonna be absolutely horrid, so it was just a one-off. But if you guys really enjoy that, uh, we can do a little one-hour session. We'll keep it shorter, and we'll just do like thirty minutes talking about a subject and then, um, you know, 30 minutes uh, questions if you have anything to, uh, to, uh, to ask me your video, but fraisier, well, pastry, not fr you know, that pastry is my bloody, uh, gremlin. I mean, I'm the, I'm the most terrible baker. That's why I'm trying to bake, but it's a huge challenge for me every time I'm baking. That's why I'm so excited when I get something that works. I'm like, ah, it works. The grand thanks so much for this live chat. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yes, thanks for the live video. Look, it was. Uh, let's wrap this up anyway. Um, it was absolutely great to uh, what to meet so many people. Uh, thanks for the donation, guys. Even on the chat, I didn't even know. Super chat. Uh, you know, there have been uh, two or three people donating. Thank you very much if you see on the chat for uh, your donation and super chat. Like I said, any help for the channel. Uh, remember that I'm not doing this like, you know, for the money. I've cut my job from full time to part time just to make this. And uh, so imagine taking a huge cut on my own salary, my own personal life, uh, just to bring videos uh, for everyone, because I believe that thing can go somewhere. Uh, um, so yeah, let's 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 keep the dream alive and try to get something done. Uh, I was beginning for pastry recipe earlier. This is so good. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to get on my French pastry. I've got that book from Pierre Armé that is really, really good. So I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Nicolas. Merci. And it's a glass. Oh, is that a fun? Thanks for it. Okay, guys. I'm going to wrap these things up now. Thanks for coming. And oh, Walter Patisserie is also my IKEA yours. Yeah, Walter, nice to see you as well. If you have recipe also for pastries from Brazil, do send me a, a link in my um, in my uh, email. Yaroslav, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have a membership? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, don't forget the lace curtain. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you very much. Good creme boosting recipes hard to find. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Walter. And don't forget the French Cooking Academy. Oh, yes, Jessica Bayan, Patreon, all the patrons. Thank you very much, the supporters, all the people that watch. Don't hesitate. Send me messages uh, on the, uh, the French Cooking Academy at gmail.com. If you don't have any other ways want to give me a recipe to post, I'll be happily posting them on the website. No problem at all. You're welcome, guys. And we're all just one big community. So, you know, we're just trying to uh, spend more time together. Here, Brazilian recipe was the point me in front. All right, so I leave you to it. Have a good day, and I'll see you all on my next live chat. See you. Bye bye.